Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top, beautiful postcard perfect day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization out here in the Point Lonesome Swamp deep in the oasis of freedom here on this glorious Wednesday morning January 19th 2022 and I noticed that there is no improvement in uh, the service of my uh, new $700 dumb phone but the day is early we shall see so while I'm waiting around for my the 5G towers to click on and start bringing airplanes flying into your living room I'm going to bring you today's chronicle of the collapse and uh, we're going to go over to what for whatever reason yesterday seems to be the new Doomer porn capital of the web, and that is none other than Common Dreams, those little lefties over at Common Dreams. Since I could find no mention of a collapse of a planet uh, on the mainstream media, went over to the left side of the dial, and good lord, it was like, when did Common Dreams turn into Collapse Chronicles? It's like every story. And uh, I, I could make a rant on any of these. We are going to do a rant on this new study about just the latest proof that we are in the sixth mass extinction, despite the fact that 99% uh, of the planet is aware of this fact. But good Lord, I'm just going to touch on... Uh, before I get into the main rant, and as I say, I could do a rant on any one of these stories. And seriously, hats off to uh, those little lefties at Common Dreams for bringing us some uh, honest reporting. I just kind of how they rolled off the Rolodex. <clears throat> All right, Exxon Net Zero Plan called Greenwashing from Climate Liar. Exxon and Big Oil's entire strategy is to pretend that fossil fuels can be part of the solution so that they can delay the adoption of renewables another year and keep profiting from oil and gas. Okay, from there to an epical decline in American global power. And uh, what this does is, in this article, they just go around the, the planet uh, from the Ukraine uh, to the South China Sea and all of these different flashpoints where the world is just going on. Uh, about its business of, <clears throat> of starting wars and just kind of shrugging off the U.S. Uh, <laughs> as under uh, <clears throat> starting, well, I don't know if starting with Donald Trump, but certainly uh, <clears throat> increasing with Donald Trump and certainly increasing with the first year of Joe Biden that America is simply becoming a laughing stock. And we will see uh, who gets the last laugh, I guess, as the world, all of these World War III hot spots. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if there's any, uh, any dot connecting between that story and this one. Only Cold War fools hit replay on doomsday and uh, this is this long article by a fellow named William Storr uh, just surveying all of the skyrocketing number of nuclear weapons that the US is producing we've heard this been listening to this story for 50 years you know talking about we have enough nuclear weapons right now to blow up this planet uh, 500 times over and yet everybody 
uh, on both sides of the political spectrum calling for more and more and more uh, nuclear arms. Uh, anyway, to uh, switch tracks, and I almost thought of making this one my rant. <clears throat> no good comes from the valorization of parenthood and the denigration of adopting animals. Uh, talking about that comment by Pope Francis last week who described people who have pets instead of children as selfish. And this is by uh, kind of an anti-natalist mother named Zoe Weil. Uh, <clears throat> Just a little pick out of this. Uh, you know, people who choose not to have children because they do not want to contribute to more resource depletion and carbon emissions. In a world full of children in need of homes and foster care, and in the midst of a climate change and biodiversity crisis caused by habitat destruction and carbon emissions, the choice to have biological children rather than adopt is selfish. Full stop. I should know I chose to have a biological child. And she fully admits that uh, the most selfish thing she ever did in her life. You know, Don Juan Matus in the teachings of Carlos Castaneda, you know, talking about how having children uh, is the single most selfish, narcissistic, self-important action anybody can take to make little carbon copies of their little planet-eating selves. But anyway, I got to move on. An excellent story uh, about the Tongass National Forest up there in Alaska. Again, any one of these. You can go on uh, Common Dreams and find all of these articles. This one titled, America's Climate Forest. America's Climate Forest, meaning the Tongass, must be protected now and for future generations if the Biden administration expects to be the climate leader. It promised the nation's forest and particularly the Tongass must remain protected from further extraction and destruction. Good luck on that. Next, we've already had this rant how many times, including recently, <clears throat> this newest report calling global plastic pollution a, quote, deadly ticking clock. Quoting the report, the damage done by rampant overproduction of plastics and their life cycle is irreversible. This is a threat to human civilization and the planet's basic ability to maintain a habitable environment. And from plastics, let's just broaden the scope a little bit. Rising chemical pollution, and this includes plastics, crosses crucial planetary boundary. Said one scientist, quote, the pace that societies are producing and releasing new chemicals into the environment is not consistent with staying within a safe operating space for humanity. And if that's not enough, uh, we will finally get to the uh, Doomer porn that I want to sit here and read. Good Lord, thank you, Common Dreams. <clears throat> Scientists decry human indifference to probable, probable sixth 
mass extinction, there is nothing probable about this sixth mass extinction. Anyway, <clears throat> said one scientist behind the new study, quote, denying the crisis, accepting it without reacting, or even encouraging it constitutes an abrogation of humanity's common responsibility. All right, and this is Andrea Hermanos. Andrea Hermanos is going to bring us this article. So I'm just going to read this. This is the uh, Sandhill Cranes weighing in. Uh, on the sixth mass extinction. Thank you for confirming that. In case you're not aware of this, there is a human-caused extinction crisis underway, probably the start of the sixth mass extinction, and denial or indifference to this planetary crisis is, quote, an abrogation of moral responsibility, according to scientists behind a new study published last week in the journal Biological Reviews. And I'm going to put the link on here and you can go read the whole uh, nine yard study with all the big words in it. Published last week in the journal Biological Reviews, the assessment by biologists from the University of Hawaii and the National Museum of History in Paris finds that the unprecedented rate of species loss is undeniable. The authors reject both the argument that the human cause loss of species are simply a natural trajectory of life on Earth and that extinction rates are exaggerated, meaning exaggerated, under exaggerated, if that's a word. They are exaggerated downward. <clears throat> Part of the issue, they say, may rest in a reliance on the red list maintained by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. That list, despite assessing over 120,000 species covers a mere 5.6 percent of the over 2.2 million animal and plant species recognized by taxonomists. And then, of course, nobody knows how many species are on this planet. Uh, you know, some of these ecologists say 10 million, but the I've had this same problem with the IUCN red list. Uh, they look at 120,000 species, completely ignoring the other 95 uh, to 99.9% .9 of species. <clears throat> In addition to likely underestimating <clears throat> extinctions of those on the list, <coughs> The authors say the compilation of, you know, all of these species going extinct is also heavily skewed toward non-marine vertebrates, while invertebrates, both on land and in the sea, constitute up to 97% of known animal species, said lead author Robert <clears throat> Cowie, uh, quote, including invertebrates was key to confirming that we are indeed witnessing the onset of the sixth mass extinction in Earth's history. The researchers point to data on mollusks which are the second largest phylum of invertebrates and whose long-lasting shells leave an important historical record. They extrapolate mollusk extinction rates to assess greater biodiversity losses, though noting that data shows marine and plant species have 
fared better in the extinction crisis than land animals. <clears throat> their findings, this is looking at just mollusks, their findings show that there are 638 mollusk, mollusk species known to be extinct and 380 possibly already extinct. Figures that add up to more than twice as many listed by IUCN's 2020 assessment. <clears throat> Making a bold extrapolation of data on 200 land snail species, the study finds that 7.5% to 13% of roughly 2 million species have gone extinct in the last 600 years. That is between 150,000 and 260,000 species going extinct uh, in total over the last 600 years. <clears throat> it is clear that there is a crisis underway, the researchers say, quoting the report. <clears throat> the sixth mass extinction may have not occurred yet, but heightened rates of extinction and huge range in population declines have already occurred in whatever it is called. Biodiversity is changing at a greater rate than it would in the absence of anthropogenic influences, which is a 50 cent word for humans. Biodiversity is changing at a greater rate than it would in the absence of humans. That's another word for anthropogenic influences. This is a fact. Denying it is simply flying in the face of the mountain of data that is rapidly accumulating and there is no longer room for skepticism, wondering whether it really is happening." Close quote. <clears throat> the scientists reject the argument that humans are simply, quote, just another species going about its business in the greater evolutionary scheme of things. This is the colony of cells bullshit argument. Colony, come on, brother. Uh, an argument that gives carte blanche to those who would destroy the earth for their own short-term gain. Humankind has a power to manipulate the earth on a grand scale, they add, and has, quote, a moral and ethical obligation to use that power judiciously, not capriciously. Colony, I invite you to uh, respond to this, that humans are just one more species out of the 10 million out there, that that, that article, you know, I just have to break in here. That argument is so full of shit. Colony of cells is, is not stupid, okay? I don't know, this dude Colin, I really like this guy. He's not exactly a troll, uh, but, but he knows damn well uh, that uh, all of this crap that he spouts about, if you read Colony anyway, brother. Okay, back to the report. We cannot help but feel that humanity is allowing a probable sixth mass extinction to unfold, and it is pie in the sky to think that this situation will change in any major way, close quote. <clears throat> All right, but of course, we have some hopium. Still, still important efforts to at least slow down the crisis are underway, the study notes. 
pointing to mobilization by groups of individuals like Extinction Rebellion and the establishment of protected areas as examples. You know, this whole myth of protected areas. And uh, we, won't, we won't get into Extinction Rebellion right now. Now, I am all for establishing every protected area we can on this planet. But the very notion of protected areas in the 21st century is as big of a greenwashing lie as all the rest of it. Unless you make the protected areas a human exclusion zone, there is nothing protected about them. Uh, it, it is it, it, the, 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 this protected area, greenwashing lie, one of the oxymorons of the 21st century uh, and the collapse of a planet. And here we even have common dreams. <clears throat> uh, but that's not to say we shouldn't have more protected areas. <clears throat> Yet, more must be done, the researchers say including by biological scientists who should, quote, spread the message that the biodiversity that makes our world so fascinating and beautiful is going extinct unnoticed at an unprecedented rate, close quote, and should also collect species and their descriptions before they go extinct, according to Cowie, <clears throat> quote, despite the rhetoric about the gravity of this crisis, and although <clears throat> remedial solutions exist and are brought to the attention of decision makers, it is clear that political will is lacking. Denying the crisis, accepting it without reacting, or even encouraging it constitutes an abrogation of humanity's common responsibility and paves the way for Earth to continue on its sad trajectory towards the sixth mass extinction. Yep, yep, yep. Anyway, uh, thank you. Common dreams, which I guess should be common pipe dreams. But, uh, at least somebody out there is admitting, sorry, so anyway, now that I have filled myself and you with uh, doomer porn from the left side of the dial, I'm going to get out here on this absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day. I see the Amazon rainforest is trying to uh, encroach on uh, Crazy Crane Campground. I gotta try to revive this dying, gas-sucking lawnmower that I got ripped off on Craigslist. See if I can get it cranked up one more time to knock back the invading jungle to do my part for the sixth mass extinction. Get out there and enjoy your moral responsibility to save the planet while you still can. Bye, guys. Yes, da da dog. We have to get out there on this absolutely gorgeous day. Mmm. Maybe we will go kayaking on this beautiful day. I keep hearing something about winter storms and snowstorms, and it is just another spectacular.
spectacularly gorgeous day on the planet. Bye guys.